And then I'm seeing a lot of drops coming out of Nico's face. So he's dropped himself. I think that was two P250s. He has, yeah. So we've got two armored P250s on Stown and Cadian. Like me and our pugs. Yeah, I like this. And this has got some legs to it. Especially with those long-range duels for the uh, CT's USP, it certainly normally, typically, favors them. And it does indicate you could potentially be going for those inner long-range fights. That P250 really does level the odds. Hampus is going to be tucked in on that spool and oh. twist. First bullet is a banger. That was one of the armored P250s deleted. Testers makes his clock look good, though. Hampus is still on the side. No one's cleared him. And again, element of surprise, Hampus, all he has to do with his big brain was stand still. Nico does catch him and we'll be able to get that bomb down as well as upgrade. Red's trying to apply pressure to Borup and it's not a jewel I'd fancy his chances on. Nork trying to push to deny and he has a flawless retake from Rez and Nork, a double for Nork himself. And that's going to put the first round on the board for NIP. Uh, well, good things here as NIP continue their winning ways. Rushley, you enjoying this one? Yo, what up? The people at home have been asking for you. Oh, really? Yeah, they've been messaging me. They're saying, how's Rush? You make sure it's like anime shower music or something. What's going on? There is a bit of a haji bargy in the back of Oh, here. no. Make sure people aren't fighting in the production room, yeah. Rush. T Tim, Tim, put it down. <laughs> he's, he's all right. It's getting chaotic here. All I'm right, going to have to observe well, we'll get... some management here. Oh, he's give breaking me the fourth wall. He's, he's <laughs> name dropping production. <laughs> well, we're going to uh, focus on this one here because it will be the force buy from Heroic Katie and onto a scout. Deagles for the other three and back towards the B bomb site where they got blown out of the water just on that pistol round. So a couple of smokes. It means they might be able to isolate Nork at range here. Looks like the majority of them want to pop through the high ramp. Yeah, and I mean, eyes on it will be Hampus. Nork should be able to swing out and provide some support. And they've found him. It's not easy. And good damage. They're doing great damage. Heroic can turn this around. They've got two frags onto the inner defenders. And now they can just drop all that util. Desperately trying to regroup. Tessa's trying to recover. And he has. Gets the M4. Gets the frag onto Twist. Only two CTs. Oh. And he's found another. Recovers the M4 off of Nork's corpse and uses it to ply his trade into Plopsky. This is a heroic inner take, just rinse and repeat with Deagles, and it actually works. Great catch. Campus could not do anything with that MP9 and the Deagle peaks. Yeah, it felt like a house of cards right there. Did NIP as Kadian will find the final frag. Red's unable to convert. Kadian left on one HP. That one's going to sting. Alex, you don't know this. Well, you do know this. You know at the end of every day I go home, and what I do is watch more Counter-Strike, or do. I play it. Yeah. But when I'm watching... Um, I have started doing play-by-play -play commentary to myself. How is it going? It sounds pretty good in my own head. Uh, I'm actually speaking out loud when I do it. So yeah. when we get into a gun round... Dude, yeah, absolutely. I'm yeah. going to show the world how bad my play-by-play -play can truly be. I I'll do the full build-up for you. I'll do everything that I want a color commentator to do. Oh, I like that. I'm going to okay. get to learn here today as well, then. All, All right. right. So early util. It is on only going to be pistols, yeah. All right. Oh, are we not? Well, we, we may maybe give me a gun okay. round. I'll, you give, you a gun. I'll give you a gunny. I'm sorry. This is Rush's specials. You're right. Stown and Cadian working in perfect unison to find themselves the opening frags on the IV aggression, locking it down. And now, well, it just seems like a, a, a matter of time. Barup has managed to catch Plopsky's main aggression, or rather peeking over on blue. Coolest eagle in the game there? Yeah, I think it's that and the blaze, right? Yeah, I just like it that sometimes my deagle looks straight pink in my hands. It's crazy how like different parts of different maps, it can look really, really gnarly as Rez is going to have hid his head ripped off. Now, when you hear the term gnarly, do you think of... Gnarly, bruh. There you go. Okay, so I just want to... Because like, the actual definition of gnarly, I'm not sure it's in line with the way that I say it all the no, time. I think you're saying it... Like, like an Australian surfer dude. Australian surfer dude. And that nade didn't finish off the 13 HP. It enables Nork to get himself one. He ain't complaining. He'll take that, and the AK will be saved all the same. So Heroic and NIP trading blows, trading rounds. I think this will be Heroic winning that battle, though, right, Chad? I think that's the law of Counter-Strike oh, economics. Yeah. So it will be the save here from the Ninjas. I don't have any options, really. And uh, I want to see if they have any interesting nade stacks that they want to opt for here, or if they maybe want to go for a bit of a, a tank, as we've been calling those five-man towers they've been building across the map. As Nork is just rubbing a bit of sleep out of his eyes. You thought that wouldn't have been the case after map number one. He did just destroy them. And it's going to be all five USPs towards the A bomb site. Now, Pop Dog, they go. So, Heroic now are going to be keeping themselves at range with the AKs. And Rez does get a little chance to, to pepper. He hasn't connected anything meaningful. And the double up. EB could catch one off guard. Oh, down. He's really not going to get caught at all. Perfect pre fire of the corner. To all of our lovely viewers out there, well, we just have Hampus surviving with USP. 
back in my days, uh, when I was playing competitively on this map, I uh, had worked out a smoke from the top of Pop Dog to land in heaven. Ooh. Now, if you're able to have one that was better than mine, because mine always had a little bit of a gap I had to leave open, if you can get one of those working, tweet it my way, because uh, I think that could be... It, it, not too many players play heaven, but if say, you really wanted to have like a full five-man smoke, because yeah. used to, we used to do bomb train, front of bomb train was the, the standard. Heaven, you make sure heaven, exactly, e right? Yeah. So if somebody uh, is able to work one of those out, tweet it my way, let me know. You can see they went for a molly there. Heroic tried to just kind of narrowly miss out on the trajectory, but doesn't affect the round outcome. We do see Heroic converting. That's now their second uh, in a row. Third, total. And yet to see Plopsky fragging. He is now on the full gun round and Molly's being deployed, forcing Stown's aggression to halt. Chad, is this it? This is the gun round, yeah. Yeah, all right. I'll set you up, my G. Borop lining up some util and Raz dropping his own on pop to keep them at bay. You won't be seeing a full commitment just yet, but the early T smoke has arrived towards Ivy. And in fact, there's a second towards Bomb Train. They might go on this. Down in the back line, grabs one, Rez taken out of the picture, and now Plopsky just over towards the bomb train, has to deal with a couple, bar up swings, he goes down, the first test has passed, there's now more utility on the train, test is up and over, he's been able to take down Plopsky, Oof. but the trades are there, we're in a three on three as the bomb goes down, Heroic now need to set themselves up. And IP don't have kits plant. here, this retake could be tough, they have to find a frag and find it now. Oh, this one's stalling out. The smokes are good. Heroic now just have to wait and deliver Cadian onto Hampus, and it will just be two men surviving. Twist and Nork, nothing better to do but to save. They've called this one off, and that's going to be the fourth round for Heroic. Love it. Why don't we just do that? We'll just swap, chop, chop and change. Do everything. You can be my new Lauren, but you're the smart one, and I'm the loud one, so I guess we'll have to kind of fill the natural roles that are given to us there. <laughs> I wonder what Lauren's doing right now. Probably nothing. That woman is the laziest woman I know. Really? Yeah. She's a gamer, love yeah. her, but like she's totally cool with just not doing much. Yeah, that's cool. That's like what Rush is like. Yeah. And I, I mean, yeah, I'd go crazy. Any rebuttal there, Rush? No, not at all. I'd be <laughs> spot on. If it's up to me, I'd just be chilling out, maybe playing some CS, some Danger Zone. What does your you perfect know. day look like, Rush? Uh, wake up, drink a coffee, um, look at the internet, see yep. what's going on. Uh, then maybe playing some games, maybe some Danger Zone if I find a, a second. Yeah. But, you know, sometimes that's a little tough. Uh, maybe some normal CS. I might even look at some single player games. I might start one and then give up after like 15 minutes. That's yeah. a very common uh, theme at the moment. You haven't mentioned VR. Do you not, is that not in your daily kind of dream day? Maybe I play a bit of Beat Saber here and there. Maybe some Boneworks or something like that. Maybe even try a couple of Minecraft runs. You know, I like uh, to, yeah. in quote, speed run. Not I, timed, I got invited but... to one of them. Oh, yes. Yeah, Rush, in, Rush invited me to a Nether Dragon Jewel. Oh, yes. We were, no, we were going to take on the Ender Dragon. Yeah, that uh, one. We <laughs> just got the Ender Pearls, so we were on the I, way to find the Stronghold. I had nothing. They just kept dropping me things and saying, you're doing great, Alex. I, li I, li I swear to God, I actually did nothing. <laughs> I, I just ran around. Yep. I'd die, and then Rush would say, hang on, I'll teleport you back. Oh, <laughs> OK. Well, it didn't sound like you were doing it on hardcore I was a dead. I was a dead weight. That's all I'm saying. And we are into a crucial round. It's round six, and you can see that Twist and Nork are the only preserved rifles they haven't bought around them. So Ninjas in Pajamas just hoping and praying that their two saved rifles can get them around out of nothing here. Hampus responsible for ramp, and he does have a smoke grenade. I wonder if he's going to plan to drop that upon contact. No, he's just fallen a little prey to the early steps. Uh-oh, Plopsky. Yep. Oh, they're very deep. He evades the nades, but he actually manages to get oh. one. He's so blind. Testus took his sweet time, but he does, does get the trade. That was madness right there. We've seen how good Plopsky can be in that position as well, only with the Deagle this time round, but keep your eyes on him as we move into the gun rounds. Good point. Uh, this one's still dicey for Heroic. There's no more smokes to operate with for NIP, but they still have that AWP and AUG, both being able to op operate at range. Nork towards the bomb train now. Twist in the back lines towards B. So they've split up in a 2-2 defense, and Heroic, they're taking their sweet-ass time about this. They're all the way back in T-spawn. you know what I've been meaning to learn? Is, I'm sure it's not hard. Is the one way on that ramp? The amount of times I Low get ramp. yeah, yeah, I'll show I get you that tonight, nonsense by that. Is it just dropping it on the lips so you can see over, or is just it drop more it on to the it? floor? Yeah, okay. in the corner that right thing. there. Yeah. Thank you very much, MC. Oh, good shooting. Nork's taken down Tessus, and hang on, there could be more. Oh, peeking on the e box. Nice right eye for Borup. Nork caught out. Twist is elevated, and Twist is using that position to great success. Hampus arrives late from Pop. And it's a massacre. The ninjas in pajamas finding their second round in the blink of an eye. That round practically stopped dead. They've got so much cash, though. Heroic, of course, with what was four in a row, have definitely been banking up nicely. The nades were deep, and Plopsky able to catch one. 
And that was what started the end of round six. Nork catching another. And it was Hampus' push off pop just to stop all that chaos from calming down too much. It seems like NIP like to, once the ball's rolling in their direction, just keep pushing it down the hill. All right, well, both teams able to buy going into round number seven. So not too many more save rounds on the cards just here is towards B is the indication flash towards low ramp. They know where the AWP is. That early shot has identified Nork's presence, but the continuing forward are heroic. Now with some smokes, flashes and Molotovs, they could quickly obscure his vision. How much of a thorn in the side will Nork be? Looks like he's dropping back. Oh no, the timing really doesn't favor him. Heroic have just managed to find it again through no real uh, heavy lifting. <laughs> That's a save call already. You so NIP win this. with two save rifles. They're celebrating temporarily. Great stuff. And then immediately Heroic respond with a flawless T round. They've got so much cash. If they keep up with this kind of distribution of rounds, this will be the end of the ninjas in pajamas on CT side. They're just not going to be able to break the Heroic finances at all. Keeping Ooh. this spotless is important. And this could be huge. A tap from Stown, advancing. Rez deals with him, but another rifle forced out of the hands of the saving CTs. Yeah, Plopsky gets to upgrade here into an AK-47, but if this chase continues forward, they will need to get a move on. The bomb is about to go off. Maybe they can find one more. Looks like they're taking too much of their time here. Heroic just flashing and jiggling each corner, not to give up any freebies, but by doing so, Plopsky and Rez will live. There's enough money for Hampus, Nork, and Twist to all reinvest. So another buy round Heroic will have to deal with here before they can break the cash. But when it was more of a direct approach like that, it was clear there was a game plan from the start of the round. We see the all, we go for the execute, we're into the bomb site, easy as you like. They weren't able to get picked off in transition. And they've actually opted to take a timeout here, Heroic, after winning a round. This is curious. Just want to make sure everybody understands the strat or the approach. Maybe talking through a few of their options is we'll just bring up the scores and the doors. Eight for Tessa, six for Stown. Those two are leading the charge over there for Heroic. On the other side, it's six for Nork and only three for Rez. The other three members of NIP have all been kept to two kills. That's Hampus, Plopsky, and Twist. Early stages here. Eighth round of play about to get back underway as the tactical timeout has expired. Now, I, I don't want to see Heroic going for anything too crazy fast out of main. I'm not sure if they realize that they are up against another buy round. They should because they lost to that eco in the previous which meant there was always going to be a surplus of cash for the ninjas moving forward. But just how much money had they remained with? And they're about to find out if they go a little bit too quick. Almost full sets of nades, diffuse kits, orbs, orcs, AK-47s. The buy for NIP does look great. This has worked for them twice now. Heroic. They've been finding opening frags onto that B site, and Hampus is going to hear the steps once again. Still no quick rotation to help him just yet. Yeah. Maybe he thinks it's all smoke and mirrors. Nork is on his way now. Rez is working on a fast flank. He could go up the pop dog ladder. Stown's holding it though, or rather holding his smoke fort Z. Does Rez want to punish? Hampus feeling the heat now. Lots of flashes keeping Nork at bay. They walk up. Hampus, he, oh, he can't do it with the M4 either. Same angle, he got caught out with the MP9. And now the site is theirs. The frags are too. Tessis has caught Plovsky deep into this B site. Bomb's already down. I can't help but feel the save call's got to be made. Just like NIP did to Heroic on their B bomb side of Mirage, Heroic are now punishing them in similar fashion. They found a weakness and they continue to apply pressure. That it, feels so easy, out. Chad. Yeah, it, it doesn't feel like there's any resistance at all. And, and you can see Hampus, he even had the better of some of those high ramp jewels and still wasn't able to convert. Nork's being dealt with with great utility. And once again, the hunt is on. This time a little bit quieter as Ork. He's posted up with the Ork, twist on the other side with the Ork. They're going to have range at least up their sleeve. They've dropped the smoke. That locks them in. They're going to push through this. The flash is going to come through any second. Ooh. Imagine four people charging through a smoke gray screen. Last second. Molly for the corner. Twist is going to try and hide. Oh, they're not even pushing for it. They're just Damn. behind the smoke spamming away. So Heroic not getting adventurous again does mean NIP retaining three guns can go for another buy. Just take a look at this as they take the time out. We've got 4.7 on Twist. He can drop a, or actually even can just buy an AWP here if he wants to use a secondary. Maybe that's the answer. Plopsky has enough to buy as well. So regardless of these rounds being consecutively thrown on the board for Heroic, NIP is still able to buy. They're still able to fight. They're just not finding themselves in the right place at the right time. They're getting locked out. They're not getting a chance to retake. The bomb sites are being swarmed and they're not winning their duels. So nothing is going their way as it's two on the trot now for Heroic since they dropped round six. And here we go. We can see a bit more of a threat this time round. We get a nose, two eyes and just the top lip. 
I'm sure by the end of the series we'll have his we'll have a full face reveal. Beautiful head there, yeah. <laughs> so heroic six, ninjas two, given the gift of having another go after saving the three rifles. Now inner has been a problem. B site exploited, and Let's you can see again. a different look from heroic already. Not a different look from the ninjas. Same setup and all. Oh, the flashes are good. Look how much oh ground God. he's covered. What a swing from Nico. Going for two. Oh takes them both. Demands respect and takes the complete opposite approach. Heroic. They got the spray too. Tessa through the smoke. Using that tracer fire from Twist M4. And again, Hampus, Nork. <laughs> Just wondering what on earth they're supposed to do with this. Different approach, same result. And this time around, will How they be wide was that? You can see the flash onto Bomb Train. Rez was the only one that was going to get info early on Nico's swing. And he just saw enough of the, the flashbang dance being done. They must have chained so many flashes there for him to have the confidence right. to keep going for that peak because he did have a skybox of just flash, 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 flash. Probably flash. Were able to do that. Give me a second. Yeah, okay, so we'll, we'll have that one up for everybody just to go over all the flashbangs that we saw making this possible. Now, Oslopski had his bloody nades oh, we're, out. We've already got it going. Okay, this is great. So you're going to see Nico's leading the charge. He comes out of main. So there's one flash. You can see it in the sky right here. Uno. There's the second flash Pass. high. Fred. Third. Four. Fourth flash. He's gone all the way to this point here off of the flashes only, which has kept Plopsky and Rez at bay on the bomb train. And he's just opened up as easy as you like. So just some good flash work So when there. your teammates say, hey, dude, I want to go main, can you flash me? And you throw one. It's not enough. It's just not enough. It's definitely not enough. Maybe four. Maybe four is the recipe for success because you can see what that did to the bomb train players. It's either peak, get info and get flashed, or hide in and get pushed. Great stuff from Heroic. Another different uh, look. And uh, Nico's already out. He's ahead of the incendiary. Twist is holding it. And Nico forces him off with some good <laughs> spray control. That's a quick way to get the CT scared. He's going to be forced out, though. Nico's got all his util. He will go down with it. So NIP have an advantage, and it's advanced upon. Plopsky finding his third frag. That's all third of this entire 10-round game so far. That was three people just to deal with one player. The fact that Plopsky's able to find another, this is good stuff. But Heroic have a truckload of utility to work with and lots of time. But, oh, here he is, yeah, yeah, the yeah, weasel yeah. <laughs> in the back lines, ready to dash the dreams of Heroic in round number 10. Wait, Cadian's looking at the flank. He's a Wes. Yeah. Oh. The clock's not quite cut, the bomb. cut out for the task. It's a good catch from Hampus. Practically a round winner from their leader. A boost does set Stown up for success. I like his chances of at least finding one of the sweets. There's Rez's peak and ooh, good adjustment. He had the perfect weapon for the job, the Org. On that long range adjustment. And now it is just a 4 HP Tessus. They're staring at the bomb and they're staring at him. Nork's the one to click the left mouse button and secure the third. And that was exactly what the ninjas required. Just puts a little bit more cash and AKs into the flow. No issues with cash for Heroic though. I think uh, just going back to B is probably the play here for Heroic. You've had so much success with it throughout the early stages of this half. Why not? You reminded you, you can do A. You reminded them they have to be there yeah. with Nico's double. You can't uh, continue to cheat a player over towards the B bomb site. You do need to maintain that four early swing and exactly that. As this time round, looks like they want to fight for Pop Tessus down using the ladder movement to hold Rez towards the back wall. Nico's going for another molly here potentially. Oh, he's actually just gone for the fight. Nico on the entries, it's been looking good. This time he's dealt with. Tessus will trade and Hampus pushing B again. Fast push from Hampus, but Plopsky got to find Tessus. He uses that smoke to hide. He reveals himself perfectly. Quick frag from behind. Borup wrapping around Sandwich has managed to keep the frags level. Twist jumping through the smoke. Cost him his life, but here comes Hampus again with a pop flank. And again, Borup finding crucial frags to make this round favorable. They know where Hampus is. And he might have to opt for the cut noise strategy. Just by disappearing for 40 seconds, they will plant. They'll shave some time off of that clock. He might be able to isolate two 1v1s. They're even faking it. Doesn't give him the peak and hopes that they'll start. Yeah, here we go. He's isolated the 1v1s now. Cadian's thinking about backtracks and he finds the first. Mission accomplished. Now it's just a question of Cadian's after plant position. The ladder might be a good way to get that info for free. Oh, okay. Leaping across train to train. Cadian has the adjustment necessary. And it will be Heroic's eighth. But coming down to the 1v1, Borup does deserve the credit. You can see they're about to be locked in on their exit from Pop. But Borup wrapping around. He stops Plopsky in his tracks. And now they're well aware of this Hampus push style, right? That's two rounds in a row where he's tried to go for a very fast flank. Heroic need to remember 
that is always going to be a threat. And they could go for a fake. They could take some territory. If they get an opening kill, then they could park themselves up in the box holes and almost get themselves a freebie as we do see NIP purchasing back in. The double orbs hampers onto a second. Finally, they're going back. And it's different. It's just twist holding this time. He's heard a lot. MP9 pushing up the ramp. It could be the play if Kadian's not yeah, expecting Kadian. it. Yeah. Boom. MP9 beats the orb. And now Twist has got a weapon he's very comfortable with. Peeking in. Does burn to Tessus. Tessus, however, falling. This is crazy. A flurry of frags in the feed puts us into a 1v3, but is it going to be a commitment for Stown? He's recovered an AWP. Jumping into oh. the fight. What a shot. Knocks Nork on his ass. And he's got time to play with. And he's got Swedes to play with too. Rez with a triple kill, practically winning the round, but Stown still exists. He's trying to fake the ladder noise. I don't know whether or not that's going to do anything in the grand scheme. Yeah, they were too far away to hear that audible right there. And Rez... And Plopsy, they've just parked themselves on the bomb. So Stown, it's going to be difficult to isolate a jewel here, my friend. You're going to need some more magical shots. Yeah, he's definitely capable. Rez might not be holding it actively now due to that absence of noise. And Plopsky's pushed up. Stown, oh, no. he's not dead. One tap headshot. What he needs, he can't find it. Plopsky, whew, saving the day. Stopping Stown before he gets out of hand. You see four for the ninjas here, but 80 rounds from Heroic. They are not complaining. They've had everything they desire. Every round. This was a great start from Twist. Finding a punishment. And actually, this is the first time we've seen NIP look threatening on the uh, B take. Yeah, they've actually done this one with not much utility. So you can see there weren't all the smokes towards Connector and pushed up towards the lanes with the Molotovs. It was more of a play out of high ramp, and that one was punished by Rez. I think Twist as well being the inner holder for that round as opposed to Hampus had a different look and maybe something they weren't expecting. But it's still these double orbs for NIP. Flash works good again. They've taken space, but Rez has found an opening. Yeah, this is great. Plopsky can continue to twist the knife as well. Talking of twist. That should be the frag. Kadian's gone. Punish found by Stown. Double up. Three on three. This game. So oh. close. And Stown just pops off. He's had a round here. No scope from Hampus. He's got to find another two. Stops down. And he's found another. Bor up down. Using that smoke, though. He jumped for info. Wasn't oh. expecting the no scope's not there. He nearly oh. had it. Stown, lucky to be alive, whistled past his eardrum. But that's a quad kill from Stown and puts Heroic in very good stead to convert this T lead. Look what it's done to the CT economy. Yeah, they're on for at least 10 here, Heroic, just against these pistols. That was Rez from Connector getting an almost freebie, but Stown continuing just to march forward. This one right here was very quick because we had that from Nork's POV and then Hampus did his very best. Oh, it wasn't too far off. That nose cut was a bit of a spicy Swedish meatball, but <laughs> that's off to one side there as it will just be these pistols. Kadian's isolated one towards E-Box. That's a nice start into round number 14. Oh, he's crazy to keep peeking and he actually gets the jewel he was hoping for. Still swinging in, still giving Nork opportunity. Oh, damn, he nearly got the third there. Tessa should be able to stop this now, but no, Nork is so good and they're so low. NIP can do this with Deegs. Nork, I say NIP, it's just been the one man. Now he's recovered an AK, they are so low. Shadow. Yep, that's enough. Uh-oh, baits the shot. Four now from Nork, looking for the ace. Just a desert eagle. That's all he needed. The elevated position, Twist catches him, and that is a colossal win. Just as Heroic have broken the bank, it doesn't stop NIP's stars from shining. Oh dear, and they've robbed them right there, not just of a round, <laughs> but financially speaking as well. Heroic going into the last round of the first You're just half. saying, it feels like 10, feels like 11. And now it's, yeah, 10 at best for Heroic. NIP get a chance to make a 9-6 half. They've been copying the beat down throughout, and oh, Nork being a hero there. Guns are dropped across, AKs are coming out, Deagle scouts, P250 at best, utility quite light, and NIP, a late resurgence here on train, may give them some confidence when we make it to that second half, but how much more punishment can they put down? Hampers pressure towards B yet again, and he's heard the early, early footsteps, which has put Nork on high alert. He's rotated over, he's got his eyes trained towards high ramp. Okay. Oh, very stylish. That was lovely. He's got that lineup cooked. And now, Nork tested. Jiggles confirms as a second. He's found both of the Franks so far as Heroic advance, and Nork is not to be stopped, finally. Kadian Scout feels the feed and knocks him off of his perch. And it needed a second. Kadian hitting some good shots on the Scout, making this round winnable, and Twist is gone too. Oh, big brain from Kadian popping off in the server tonight with the Scout. Puts Rez on notice. 
Heroic pulling this one out of the hat. I thought the frags from Nork would be enough. Rez trying to pick up the pieces. It's a mess on the site. Cadian littering it with Swedish corpses. Making some noise. Needs to clear oil. Knows it's a possibility, but also vulnerable to upper. Cadian's done so much work already. And Rez does find him. First frag found. Time is sensitive. He's holding it and peak by down. It's 10 for Heroic. What a half they've had. It's on their pick. It makes sense. 10 T rounds. Cadian ain't complaining. He does destroy on that mini or we'll be back with the second half shortly Ten to five, double digits already found in the first half, albeit by the smallest of margins. A little pop off from Cadian securing what could have been a nine six. The ninjas up against heroic. A machine. I'm joined by Chatty B. Got some breaking news here for you, Alex, out of Denmark. So a bit of Danish news. Oh, Mitha, who was once upon a time coaching North in real more recent times, has been coaching Renegades. Oh, has cool. uh, just been announced as the head coach of Maus, and it will be his debut today with the squad as they go up against Astralis in our next best of three. That's big. Cool. I'm happy for Mitha as well. I mean, I remember him talking about his first coaching position on North, and we definitely put the uh, the work in. 
Oh, that's two gooshes early. Stown and Kadian have both been put down to red HP, so good shooting, sharp yeah, shooting. Yeah, look at this. Here. That's a double straight into pop. Perfect timing from Rez as Hamper swung out main. Oh, and another quick headshot. The aim is from Sweden. Hold and pull, no punches. Three of those duels we just saw, the players on Heroic didn't even get a chance to shoot back. There we go. Nico, you got any more where that came from? A lovely one tap. Nork might swing out. No, oh, Nico's ready for it. One to one to one, a double duel. It's getting a bit awkward now. Can't hit it. And so it will be the ninjas in pajamas securing a practically spotless sixth. Okay, well, will Heroic force by? That's the next question in the tale of train. So they want to see if they can bounce back immediately or are they happy just to concede early and go for some more conservative rounds to get the big guns out with all the trimmings, nades, kits, all the goodies. It's in, uh, I guess, heroic style to force by, and that's what we'll see. Kadian onto a scout, the Deagles for the others, and this is almost becoming a very standard buy for them on the CT side. Note the smokes, quite the key priority being used. Tessa's in pop right now. Bullets through the tin. No damage. Oh, and that's the whole squad up there. Tess is so close. And now the rotate's coming in nicely. The three here. Three here. Tess has to lock the door. He checks the main walkout. No one's there. He's down saying that there's uh, nothing to report on his Ivy walk either. So this timing on the nade from Borup is everything. They'll throw it at Util. Will they be catching the nade? Not really. Awkward now. Molotov, smokes all coming over. Nico needs something, and he has got the position. He's got the frag. Tess is finding one as well. Heroic's force by is notorious for finding these Deagle headshots. Oh. And they've done it again. NIP spread too thin. Eagle get the jewels bomb. one. He can recover the bomb without anybody seeing it, but he actually wants more. He wants a frag, and he's gotten it. Smoke deployed. He can pivot back if he wants to. Knows there's a scout in play, though. On for a 1v4. Disappearing, bomb recovered, but knife out and that's down. <laughs> Woohoo! If he was a little low, we could have seen a stab. Yeah, it felt like he almost got the blade in there. So yeah. uh, Heroic bounced back immediately, and that's 11 now as NIP gets set down to the 1400. such strong control, dude. I mean, this is the same way it felt like NIP had control of Mirage. Yeah, it's very similar feeling, isn't it? And, and some of the rounds that NIP have won have been through just sheer individual brilliance, just like that Nork Deagle round on the tail end of the first half. So. Let's see, NIP, they're going to force again. It's the Deagle Wars in the early stages. Heroic, if they can break serve and get two consecutive, they should be closing this one down quite quickly on train. Taking us to the third of Vertigo. And I'll look forward to watching Vertigo because what we saw just the other day out of NIP was great. And so is that nade. Look at the damage done. Dunked on the feet of Plopsky down to half HP. Rez walking on up. Uh, Borup's holding it, and this is the denial of main. Doesn't have to work too hard for it. Tessus has just walked in. Confirms nobody's home. Heroic tried it. It worked. See if NIP can make a similarly convincing case. However, previously they they went for a single Hampus holding the upper walkout. This time they've got a double rifle hold. And the angle from Borup does favor him significantly as these deagles jiggle and try and find a way in. Three, getting through the Borup net, but that's the crossfire filling the feed. Everyone doing their part, and it is just evenly split between the two of them. Borup and Nico tested, and they passed with flying colors. I think everyone needs a Nico in their life. Holding their hand, making sure they can set up those kind of cool crossfires. And Heroic, by sweeping that one under the rug, they have put themselves in the driver's seat even more so. Their train is pulling out of the station. NIP, they've been left waving. As map number two looks like it's going to pass very, very quickly here. And, well, I think that NIP had a, a decent T side, a very good T side, actually. We were astounded by the amount of T rounds that they were winning in their series against G2. Uh, oh, go once down. You got the info. You got the first. He's looking for some more $600 Wanda frags. And, well, Rez has drawn the fire of Nico nicely. A bomb plan would be the dream here. And, well, oh. that's Rez's responsibility. Problems? Yeah, not the biggest of issues. Nico handles it. 
Good damage. No one going down, though, so nothing to report on the NIP front. Come back in with the AKs. We'll see how much of a game they want to make of this or whether it will be determined on Vertigo. God, part of me wishes it does. Yeah, I want to get to Vertigo as well. It's uh, a map where I think the NIP have impressed me in several different occasions. In the early stages of this year, I really like their CT approaches. I love how poised that they're looking on their T side now. A lot more pressure towards mid and B, but we'll get to that if we need it in the pregame segment. We have a couple more rounds to get through here, and Threat doesn't want it to end just yet. Talking to the boys, coaching from a distance now that we're in this online era. They're not boot camping at the NIP facility right now. Everybody in their homes, as you can see. And this is a tall, tall task to get back into a map. And you've been battered and bruised. AKs are out, no AWP for Nork, who's been fantastic again, 16 kills for him. Everybody has an AK, nobody has any Molotovs. Five smokes, seven flashes. What can they make work here, NIP? I'm gonna see a five lane smoke dribbled on out. That e -box is aggressive. Eight. Double pop setup, Kayden's practically there as well. Different look. Borup not going to go down. That death could have cost him the round, so very grateful to not have gone down. Now, oh, taking another chance. Rez, that's ballsy. You can understand why. A justified risk, but it hasn't paid off. Done a lot with the rotation, though. It pulled a couple of players out of position for Heroic here as they needed to bail out Borup, so they do have a helping hand in Nico over there now. But look at this. Ivy pressure and to defend that with an org. Uh, sorry, a UMP from that range. Yeah. Yikes. Good luck have fun. It's down maybe getting that. Oh, he still can't quite land it as he wanted to. It would have definitely slowed them down. Are they wanting to re aggress here? Kaden's setting up a flash. Oh, it's going to be everything. Look at this. Double. Set up for success against the double AK, no less. Plopsky's dug himself out a little bit of space into pop. Nork from main. Winnable 2v4. Should get the info, gets the frag. Plopsky cannot be trifled with. Especially out of his signature pop dog area. Oh. Finally found. And Nico. Eliminated by Nork. Overcoming adversity here. First a double from Plopsky, now making it a winnable 2v4. Not another Nork clutch, surely. We've the, had enough of them. The tallies must be off the charts at the moment. Uh, he's in a very good position to do it. They're both coming from Z. If he fakes this... Oh, he wasn't ready for it. Borup just pushing in, catching him as he did his cursory stare. Double AKs brought into the CT side and Heroic are on a fast track to get to Vertigo. Yes, please. Really enjoying seeing the developments we've seen from Heroic. In fact, I really enjoyed it. Actually, there was a Heroic Astralis Vertigo that went into some crazy overtimes not too long ago. I think it was yeah. Blast. Really, really enjoyed that game. So getting to see it again, Heroic's got take on it. And of course, NIP, who have been no slouch on Vertigo, their own uh, path to glory. That is the manager of Heroic, in case any of you are wondering. That's Hanny. He's there on the mic with the boys. In lieu of the fact their coach is not able to be in the server with them, sitting out a ban. And this is do or die now for NIP. They've invested and they've invested heavily. They've already lost the opening pick. Hampus has already taken a chunk of damage and Heroic are sailing through to yeah. map number three. Speed running. CT side train. Taking a look at the stats, and they'll obviously be updated on hltv.org after this series has concluded, but Nork currently has five 1vx situations won, and I think that all five of those were just the other day, so we'd love to see how many he won here today as well. Going towards the crossfire, a new one this time on the uh, B side of the map. I'm wondering if Nico's faith in Kadian will be rewarded, because if Kadian takes a flash or a missed shot, Nico's so exposed to their first pre-fire, and he has got the perfect setup. Oh, and even a smoke ramp. They go in on this. Nico first, but from behind, no one's holding it. It's good. They got some space now, and bomb can be planted. That's Plopsky's death. We just caught it. The tail end of it, and the retake. So you can see Stout's actually cancelled the pop dog with the numbers advantage they have. He'd rather just come in as the pack they are. Makes sense. Two of them are low. This is definitely winnable for NIP. A flash. Does Twist have a little look after it? Oh, he's even got another lower. Three of the four. So low. And now Stown's gone. They can win this, and they are. Rez taking matters into his own hands. Finished off by Borob. Cadian's orb shot found the rest. And so 15 for Heroic and comfortably. They'll retake that with plenty of time to spare. NIP. Train's just not up to snuff. They even maintain the double orb there. So he got dicey for a moment. But Heroic walk away with the round and all the goodies that they require. 
NIP with the plant means they can get one final bite. But still well handled in that low HP. It did start to spiral. Barra finishes things off and yeah, check out NIP. No AWP again. You have your AWP, Nork, who's been a bit of a monster so far with that weapon, unable to wield it. The economy just isn't there. They haven't been able to facilitate that. The rounds haven't been able to allow after that pistol round and then losing the force by. So Hampus looking to take space, but train, it's no mirage. A lot harder to make the room. Oh, you're brave, Borup, into the flames. And, oh, even unloading his mag while flash, he can finish the job. He nearly gets three. Heroic. This speed run ain't done. It looks like it's all over in round 22. We are seeing Vertigo on the horizon. Nork trying to deny it, and he's doing great stuff so far. He practically finds three, a double so far. Tessus over the smoke, though, denying the dreams of Nork's clutch. He's got the capability, he has it. But he's against a brick wall of Heroic, and he's opting for Ivy. That is a gap, temporarily. Tessus is already flanking fast. Getting that info that the brown horse is clear, which means eyes will surely, eventually, gaze upon the Ivy option. I always get slightly more mad when the guy with the flight cap kills me. I just feel like someone with such terrible style shouldn't be banging me out. Nice. 16 to 6. We're off to Vertigo. And this is where we'll...